Hi, my name's Cathy Millett. We're looking at water lilies again. So how do you model water lilies? Follow along and find out. In the real world, water lilies are often proud. They sit above the water and often because they've jostled for space or because um, they've just come up out the water. So how would you model water lilies? Well, one method is to buy something like JTT. Now these water lilies, you can see they're on a stem. And if you look at a lot of prototype photos of water lilies, they're actually quite cramped and they're often shooting out the water. They're not completely flat. And to be honest, although these are quite large, if I was doing foreground modeling, I'd probably use something like this because I do think they capture that coming through the water best. At the same time, when I was looking for these, I bought these. Now, it wasn't until I got them home that I realized that wasser melanin was actually watermelons. And look, it's even got some watermelons to give it away. But I like the fact it's got some very traily looking water. So I'm gonna use this as another water edge plant. And I had one very like it in my ornamental pond. This is a poor, uh, another one of my dioramas I just mocked up. And this one, you can see there's some rocks in there. And this is actually magic water, so it's a little bit sticky still. And I just put some pond scum around using the AK Interactive Slimy Grimes because they were easy, just to give a little bit of a, a feeling and a depth that these go down to. Otherwise, I thought it might look like they were just floating a bit too much on the surface. So these are JTT part 95537 and they're three quarter inch, um, 12 in a pack, water lilies. So there we go. And then these are watermelons, actually. They're Fala 181266. And I just thought they'd look really good to go around here as well. And so they come with some little stems for those. I don't think I'll be needing the watermelons, but here we go. So they come, and the reason I wanted to do another pour was you can see, you can actually, on each of these, just put them up a little bit so that they stick above the water. And I think that, that feeling of depth that you'll get when these uh, are showing will be really good. So the first thing I'm gonna do though, before anything else, just going to uh, make a little hole. Now, because this is magic water and I've not yet set it properly, um, I can make a little hole like this. And any problems that I have with the um, resin there will be filled in in a minute. So I'm just gonna push that in because I didn't want it to be too far proud and then I'm going to pull all of these up so that they're just out of the water and I can dent them in and then there we go. Now the one thing I would say is you do end up just sometimes these are copper wire and you might end up just knocking the um the copper slightly and I'm just using a bit of Vallejo anything will do just to put a bit of um probably even a paintbrush might do a better job and um, just to put a little bit of paint back I'm gonna put one more set in I'm gonna put them over here I didn't really want the flowers on um you could put the flowers on you just need to to glue them in and then my wasser melon which is a very different looking plant so this is my one wasser melon and you can see it spreads and I'm just gonna just going to have it, oh, I suspect I'm going to have it coming out of there. So, big hole. And I'm just going to push that down into the depths and just weave it through. And I'm actually just going to snip the end off. Gonna snip the end and then push it down into there. So I've got a bit coming out there and then it can spread through. And again, a little bit of a push. And then a, what I want is for it to just pull up through the surface. So There we go. Right, so some of these um, water lilies will get buried, but hopefully not too many, and then we'll have some of them coming out proud. So I'm just going to get and mix up some more magic water. 
Normally, I get a plastic glass, I put it on my scales, I put in, because um, this is a two to one mix, I put in water up to a certain level and weigh it, um, say in this case it was 30 grams, and then I put in another 60 grams, so I have a total of 90, and draw another line where the water is, tip the water out, dry the cup, and then I'm ready to go to mix. You just need to make sure that you dry the cup very well, because water and resin don't really mix. So. That's my normal technique. And then I've got magic water, two to one mix, very easy to use. At this point, you just need to um, get your lines where you can see them and you literally just pour in your resin to the right line. And this is quite yellow to start with, but it has set fine. And I'm gonna put a bit of coloring in anyway, so it doesn't matter. So there we go, just tip it in pour away. And this is the two to one, you can tell it's two to one because it's a bigger bottle. And there we go. Again, just tip it in. And you can see that there's, oops, yeah. Um, I find they're, they're a little bit flexible if you get the, the amounts out a little bit. So don't panic and start adding more and more and more until you end up with way too much. So now I need a stirring stick. These are the sort that you get from McDonald's or other places that sell coffee. Um, and to be honest, I've used them a lot. Um, so much so that I actually got a box for Christmas one year. Yep, people give you exciting gifts when you're a model railroader. So a box of a thousand stirrers. I've actually got about six of the boxes now. So big stir, you just need to stir and stir and stir. And if you look at this at the moment, it's got quite a silky look to it. And that tells you that it's definitely not mixed. It goes completely clear when it's mixed and it takes a lot longer than you think and it catches in the edges. So you need to make sure you go around the edges and you need to make sure you mix the middle as well and the bottom to the top. So you need kind of a, a whipping action to make sure that you mix it all in. And it's really vastly important it all get mixed. Now you can see that's gone clear now. So I know that at least it's all mostly mixed. So what I'm gonna do at this point is add a little bit of Tamiya color. Now I don't want a lot, but I do want it to be slightly coloured because the rest of my um, pond water is. So this is just gonna have probably th three drops, I think. And this is quite thin, actually that's gonna be four. It's got a bit less colouring in. And it does stick around the top, so it's another good way of telling have you mixed everything in, is when your paint is evenly distributed. So you just keep stirring and stir and you get a nice action going. And now you think, oh, it's mixed. It looks mixed. It looks fairly good. So just keep stirring. And don't stop stirring until you're incredibly bored. That was a lot of mixing. So first up, I'm just going to pour it into here. And I don't want a big, thick layer. So I'm just going to use this as a guide. So I'm going to pour it in one side and it will run round. Just going to blow on this to get rid of the bubbles. And this is magic water in it. Well, that's it. It's debubbled already. It's really good at that. And what I might do in a minute is just bend some of these down a bit, but I don't want to do it too much. So what I'll probably do is when it's totally set, I'll bend any that are sticking out the water down totally. So this is the final result on the water lilies. Well, I will just push these down a bit further, but as you can see, my resin's not quite set yet. It's magic water, so it takes three or four days, and when it's finally set solid, I'll push some of these down a bit, but generally, I'm very pleased with how it's come out. I think it's a nice effect. The only thing I'd watch is the um, lilies that have gone into the resin have changed colour, because the resin's gone inside of the card that's used to make them. Not a surprise. Um, so, you know, something to be wary of. You could paint each of these um, water lilies before you do it, and then you might end up with a more common colour look on the surface. But overall, very easy technique to do, very easy to put the um, lilies in place and to pour that extra layer of resin, and I think it really does add to the look. It looks like they're there in the pond.
In this week's episode, it's the mini Cathy's and the swamp creature. I've heard there's a swamp creature around here somewhere. escape the magic water or is she ever doomed to be stuck in a diorama of lilies? Well it was another gripping instalment on water lilies. I hope you enjoyed it and um, if you are enjoying it subscribe to me on YouTube or my website kathymillett.co.uk alternatively like me on Facebook Kathy Millett Modelling. See you next week.